Y'all remember them twins? Lima's sisters? Lima's sister she cares so much about? Hey everyone, this is our new YouTube channel. A desperate search is underway for a woman who went missing in West Hollywood. That had altar switches at the exact same moment that the police had to come deal with. And Lima's at the wedding on the phone with the face, all that. Remember them? I think we might have found one. And it doesn't look good. Dahlia Takali was last seen yesterday around 5 p.m. on North Genesee Avenue near Santa Monica Boulevard. She's 30 years old, and the sheriff's department says she is developmentally disabled. Thank you so much. Apparently, much, she's been fighting much. with her mom, assaulting her, allegedly, apparently. We got the mom's name, and Dahlia has accused the mother of abusing her through technology. Sound familiar? Let's get into it. BJ Investigates, a show I just created and might never do again. So in the recent episodes you might have seen, you might have caught wind, I did interview Bam Margera. What you have is big news because I could have done an interview with you and we could have talked, 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 but you have f***ing proof. Now, at the time of recording of this video, it is Wednesday, May 10th. 2023 who knows when or where or what this video is going to go up on but we're here we're doing it i wanted to tell you all the date because this is such a fast quickly developing story that literally anything can happen at any moment so as of today all of these things are what i understand to be the case so if you've been around my channel or channels for a while then you may be familiar with a woman named lima mora takali yavramovich sometimes she mixes those together and puts those together in all kinds of combinations but that is her name, allegedly. So I have a whole playlist here on BJ Investigates having to do with Lima, and I have many videos, over 50 videos, addressing the Bam Margera conservatorship situation on That Surprise Witness TV. All right, so Lima. Lima Yamramovich? Yamramovich. Lima is a high profile celebrity guardian who also happens to own a tech company that uses experimental virtual reality exposure therapy as a medical treatment. You have a company yes. ca called Aura. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda is the most difficult case. We're going to be documenting exactly how we're getting Amanda into treatment. The way that you get somebody that doesn't want to get help into treatment is through something called an LPS conservatorship. It feels like a betrayal to that person, but at the same time, um, Amanda's in a safe place now. She had passed away. Um, it's been a really, really big shock for us. A 25-year-old woman by the name of Amanda Rabb unexpectedly died in Lima's care. And when Lima came online to discuss the woman's cause of death seven months after the fact. And so I'm just going to read it word for word of what we got. Lima announced a cause of death that was inconsistent with the actual truth. Um, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. She said the woman died from a seizure disorder. Come to find out, the medical examiner's report said that she died from cardiac arrhythmia and there was no mention of seizures anywhere on the report. When I called Lima's false statements, exactly what they were, <clears throat> lies, she sued me for it. And so I started making videos about it, calling that a lie. And now I'm getting sued over it. Well, I got a few updates for y'all on that case. One has to do with Lima herself and another potentially conflicting story about her identity. The second has to do with Lima's sister, Dahlia Tikali. Now there are twins, so one's named Dahlia and one is named Dia or Dima, depending on what public record you have access to at any given moment. But there's these two twins, Dahlia and Dia. Dahlia Tikali was last seen yesterday around 5 p.m. on North Genesee Avenue near Santa Monica Boulevard. We have a few videos about them here on BJ Investigates. We also have a bunch on That Surprise Witness TV. But the two major updates that I wanted to provide y'all with today have to do with Lima and her conflicting stories 
about her identity, and Dahlia, one of the twins. Now, you might be wondering just up front, where's Dia slash Dima Dia? No clue, no idea, haven't found her. But there's some updates about Dahlia, and she seems to have been located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, as of last month. So this one has to do with Lima's graduation date and as a result with her age. As has been the case with this woman before, all might not be what it appears to be. The question up for investigation is when and where did Lima graduate high school and did she lie to courts and police officers under penalty of perjury about her high school graduation credentials? So over the course of my investigation, I have requested dozens if not hundreds of publicly available documents through a process called public records requests. Each state has their own version of it. There's a federal version called FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act. But myself and my team have requested a lot of stuff from many states about Lima, Bam, Amanda, the twins, through these public records requests. These documents, the ones we have to request, include things like police reports, 911 calls, incident reports, body camera footage, stuff like that. So the first piece of evidence that I wanna bring to your attention is the guardianship application that Lima filled out for Bam Margera in September, 2021. But on this application, and as you will see, I'll cut to the chase, Lima told a court in Florida signed her own name under penalty of perjury that she graduated from a high school called Union High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the year 2008. In that same exact guardianship application that she signed, and I know that's her signature because she signed all kinds of other things with that hideous thing, including the lawsuit. I'm not a handwriting expert, but look at this signature. It looks demonic. You're so it's demonic. It's shocking. I'm losing my voice over it. It's shocking. Anyway, but she did sign it. And you know what else she signed with that same signature comes to mind besides the lawsuit was uh, the United House of God that to church she incorporated like moments after Amanda Rabb died. Yeah. So like I said, Lima filled this document out, signed her name to it in September, 2021. And not only did she put that she graduated from Union High School in 2008, but she also stated that her birth date was July 20th, 1989. In addition to her high school information, Lima also put in some college information. The college she listed on the form, and we'll put that up, is University of Guelph, is how y'all said it's pronounced. I would have never thought that that is how you pronounce that based on that spelling, but that is what y'all said. So she graduated from University of Guelph in 2013, according to this document she filed under penalty of perjury with the courts in Florida. So out the gate, that seems fine. I was actually born a year after Lima. I graduated in 2008 from high school and I graduated in 2013 from college. So far, so good. But there's some more conflicting evidence that I wanted y'all to take a look at that has come to the surface since my last reporting on Lima and her sisters on Media Investigates. The document that I'm showing y'all and that you have been looking at is a document that Lima had to fill out in order to become Bam Margera's guardian in the state of Florida. She never actually did become his guardian in the state of Florida, but it still is an application that she filled out to try to effectuate that dynamic. So now we're gonna move on to another piece of evidence that I have in my possession, also a public record. All of this is public information. Anyone can request this. You can get it if you live in the United States, but out of an abundance of caution, we are going to redact some personally identifiable information. Now, this police report was filed in Delray Beach, Florida on June 16th, 2022, which was literally nine months after that first document we just looked at. So if Lima was born in July, 1989, like she said in that guardianship application, we would expect her to be 32 years old in June, 2022. Now, now, let's look at the filing, shall we? Now, in this filing, and I have entire videos on just this, Lima is working with police officers in Delray Beach, Florida, in order to hunt down Bam Margera to put him into a rehab. Now, I've spoken to Bam, and he said he was being put into these against his will. But at the back of the police report, there are some like witnesses listed, and it does say Lima Yavrimovich. Now, it has a Washington state address listed here, which is where Ara is founded or whatever, but it lists as her age 30 years old. It's 
very interesting to me how her age could have ended up being 30 years old whenever she's supposed to be 32 based on the birthday she put on the guardianship application. But this doesn't necessarily tell us everything we need to know. Is it possible perhaps Lima didn't actually tell the officer her age? Someone else told her, maybe it was a guesstimate. I mean, I guess. If you know how police reports are supposed to work, like are they supposed to just guess somebody's age or do they get the age from the person? I really don't know. But it says she's 30 years old. So that was the first thing that made me kind of scratch my head. Because how can somebody be born in July 1989 and somehow be 30 years old in 2022. It just the math ain't math to me, but y'all know that I am not a math whiz. So again, I don't necessarily know if Lima is the one who put her age there. So we're going to move on to a third piece of evidence, another police report from only about a week or two later, this time still in Florida, but now we're in Broward County. So on this police report, Lima is also listed. Lima is also seemingly working with the police to try and track Bam down to put him back into treatment. And on this police report, it lists Lima's age as well. But this time, it don't say 30 years old. This is like two weeks later and her birthday's supposed to be in July. So no birthday passed between June 16th and June 22nd. Now she's 32 years old. A week, two, two weeks later, she's 32. All of a sudden she's 32 years old. So again, it's not like they're just off one year either. It's not like, oh, they got the birthday wrong. They got it. No, they're off two years. So again, again, same issues and concerns from the first police report still remain here. All I can really go on is the thing that she signed her name to under penalty of perjury. So let's look at a little bit more evidence, shall we? So someone who was born in 1989 should have graduated high school in 2007. Perhaps if she got held back or she started school late or something, maybe she failed, um, then she would perhaps graduate in 2008. But I was born in 1990, I graduated in 2008, and I was one of the youngest people in my class. So it is possible that that is just fine that she graduated in 2008. And as we have looked at these inconclusive and contradictory police reports, it is unclear whether or not Lima is 30, 32, who knows, 31, 33, who knows how old the woman is at this point. The age is a little bit of a mystery. So let's get into a little bit of these school records, which is the other thing she put on that guardianship application that we might have some conflicting evidence for. So the first thing I did was I checked into the Union High School graduation list from the year 2008. There is this online repository that claims to be a class list and it didn't mention Lima anywhere on the list. That being said, it doesn't look like a complete list at all whatsoever there was only three people listed on it. I did try to look into the Union High yearbook and I was unsuccessful in finding it at first. So I made a video about it on That Surprise Witness TV. Now, moments after that video premiered yesterday at the time of recording this video, all of a sudden Lima Takali showed up on the Union High website graduation list. But it also looks like you can just add anybody's name. I don't know if Lima added it or just somebody trying to be funny or cute, but that did happen. But one thing that also happened before that, there was another high school in Oklahoma in the Tulsa area called Broken Arrow High School. Now Broken Arrow High School had listed in 2002 Lima Takali graduating from Broken Arrow High School. Now, again, I'm gonna pull up the guardianship application. She said she graduated from Union High School in 2008. So now we're at Broken Arrow High School in 2002. But again, that is not conclusive because I don't know if that's an official high school roster or anything like that. All I know is that list said 2002 Broken Arrow High School and had Lima on it. And I'll show y'all screen recording right here. Now, again, since I aired my video, this is one of the risks you take of telling people your investigations as you do them. As soon as I aired my video, Broken Arrow High School class of 2002 graduation roster was updated to include Lima Takali graduating under a different spelling of Lima Takali. So it's like Takali with an A, Takali with an E. Who are these superintendents updating these? Like just can't really know. You just can't really know what you're dealing with on these class roster things. But this is what I do, open source investigation. If it is available to the public, I will look at it and I will use it as a piece of evidence to kind of piece together the larger puzzle. Well, the subscribers from That Surprise Witness TV came through and they found the yearbook from 2008. We scanned and scanned all through all the seniors. I'm gonna tell you one thing, I know Lima Takali, no Lima Mora, no Lima Yavrimovich, none of that. None of that in seniors class of 2008. But, but what the 2008 Union High School yearbook does show are Dahlia Takali and Dima Takali. Not Dia, Dima, Dima. 
and we'll put their yearbook right here. So no Lima, no Lima anywhere to be found as far as that goes, but there is a Dahlia and a Dia. Now we looked into the 2009 yearbook and also no Lima and also no twins. I also just happened to know that the twins did graduate from a high school in Canada in 2009. So I believe what happened as far as the twins are concerned, they attended Union High School as juniors in the year 2008. They did run track and there was also this weird whole like twins page in the yearbook. We'll put it all up here. It's all publicly available information. But we did look into like ancestry.com, Broken Arrow High School, and also found no record of Lima Yevremovich going there or attending there. So I like to do full fair investigations where we actually just try to get to the truth. So I wanna be very clear, perhaps there was another Lima Takali in the Tulsa area who graduated from Broken Arrow High School in 2002. I mean, I guess that's a possibility. I'm, I'm open to that possibility, I guess. Um, it also could, could have been an error or an accident that her name ended up on that list in the first place at all from 2002, but I am also open open to the idea and the possibility that Lima Yovimovich did graduate in 2002. I really don't know. 2002 is a good five years apart from 2008. I don't know how she could have forgotten that and then told a court under penalty of perjury the wrong year. I don't know. I'm just putting all the possibilities out there that I can think of. Where is she? Where is she? It's a great question. And that's what we're gonna get into the next portion of the updates. And this one has to do with Dahlia Takali, who is Lima's sister. And also this girl, Dahlia, is a twin to Dia slash Dima. So like I said, I've already covered the twins story extensively on YouTube, but for our purposes today, suffice it to say that the twins were YouTubers who made films and they were a bit avant-garde. But we'll say a little creepy here. Here. Exactly, you see what I mean? So they, they did stuff like that a few years ago, but they kind of disappeared off the internet. Also, Lima has said very publicly in many different ways and configurations that these twins were the inspiration for her starting her whole mental health journey at all. Our father growing up was very abusive to my sisters and I. And um, my mom left when I was about five years old and my sisters were around three years old. My sisters didn't remember any of the trauma, but I had a, you know, I, I remembered everything and um, my sisters were the poster children for the perfect child. She said her sisters are identical twins. They were identical twins. They um, were athletes. They had straight A's. And they suffer with a lot of mental health problems apparently. They had no recollection of the trauma and then um, roughly within their mid-20s um, they began to hear voices. She says that they were falsely or incorrectly diagnosed, discloses their medical conditions. Once they started to seek treatment is when it all went downhill from there. They were told that they were schizophrenic, which is not the case. At the beginning, they were prescribed antipsychotics, misdiagnosed for about three years. After three and a half years, my sisters were finally properly diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. She wanted to help her sisters. They ended up being misdiagnosed. They had some substance issues and she wanted to help her sisters. So that's what led her to starting this experimental virtual reality company that partners with Free Hat. I, I don't know, I don't know. That's what she said, not me. So in previous investigations, we were able to pinpoint the twins, at least for some time, in the West Hollywood area of Los Angeles, California. One of the twins, Dahlia, the one we're talking about today, was apparently missing slash on the run. A desperate search is underway for a woman who went missing in West Hollywood. Dahlia Takali was last seen yesterday around 5 p.m. on North Genesee Avenue near Santa Monica Boulevard. She's 30 years old, and the sheriff's department says she is developmentally disabled. They think she could be heading to the area of Sunset Boulevard and Carson Avenue. Takali's family is very concerned for her well-being and is asking for your help. If you see her, you're asked to call the LA County Sheriff's Department. Who was she running from? I can probably guess, but we did a whole investigation into like, where is Dahlia Takali? And we were all assuming that they were living in this little shack with a literal red light on the porch in a like half house. I don't know, it was very weird. And we were thinking Dahlia was in there with a little shaved off blonde mullet, missing a tooth, playing the piano with her toes. But apparently she at least 
made a little bit of a detour to Oklahoma in the month of December. So someone tipped me off recently to the fact that there was an arrest warrant put out for Dahlia Takali in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that arrest warrant was just issued April, 2023. Now, I was able to track down some of the court documents thanks to one of my friends. Thank you very much, you know who you are. And allegedly, according to these court documents, Dahlia attacked her mother. And the mother's name is listed in the court documents. Now this is big news because we've never been able to figure out who their mother was. The mother's name, who's also listed and referred to as a victim in these court filings, is Linda Omar. Brand new name, brand new last name. I don't know how, I don't know why. So I don't know how much of these allegations we'll actually be able to show. I'm not definitely not about to read them all because they are a little bit disturbing. But the allegations in general arise from an apparent altercation, physical confrontation, that has happened between Dahlia and her alleged mother, Linda Omar, and Dahlia was accusing her mother of, quote, abusing her through technology. What the fuck? Oh! Now, Linda, the alleged mother, called the police and Dahlia was taken to the hospital for a mental health evaluation. The hospital was called St. Francis. So the court filing does say that Dahlia was taken into protective custody and then transferred to a mental health institution called St. Francis. So I don't know if she was arrested, booked, put in a prison, or if she was arrested and then put into some type of a 5150 Marchman, whatever Oklahoma's version of that is, or Baker Act or whatever. So as of the date of the recording of this video, there is no court date set for Dahlia's case. It is unclear to me whether she was ever an inmate, it's unclear to me whether she was ever actually apprehended. It's unclear to me whether she posted or paid the bail. I'm not, also, I'm not an expert on it. So if you are, maybe comment in the comment section down below. But it seems like the arrest warrant and everything was just issued in April. But all of these events, this alleged altercation happened back in December of last year. Now, it's very interesting, the timing of all that. Y'all know we love timelines over here. We made our where is the missing twin, where is Dahlia or whatever video on December 20th. 2022. That's when it came out. This alleged altercation happened December 6, 2022. So like three weeks, two and a half weeks before our video came out, this alleged altercation happened. So anybody saying that this happened because of our video, I don't know how that could possibly be. Now I can do a more thorough reading of the actual documents, maybe on a future surprise witness video or something, but I wanted to give y'all the info over here. I wanted to do a quick update for y'all. I'm really honestly trying not to make this video too long and we're already going longer than I thought I wanted to go. So I'm not gonna get into all the allegations here, but one thing keeps sticking out to me about this police report. Well, actually two, one of them is Dahlia was accusing her mother of abusing her through technology. And interestingly, in the court filings, the district attorney refers to those allegations as delusions, which of course, if somebody is already telling you, oh, she's schizophrenic, she's bipolar, she's DID, she's all these, she's got all these issues, got all these problems, she's crazy. We've seen it before. When the cops show up, they discriminate against that person who they've been told that stuff about. So the district attorney referred to these allegations as delusions, but I don't know, is it delusional to think that somebody in that family could abuse someone using technology? Uh, add this together with the fact that Dahlia Takali's Instagram account has used the hashtag, hashtag I was used for science, but maybe it's a delusion, who really knows? The other, th the other thing that sticks out to me about this police report is is the name Linda Omar. I've never been able to find who the twins mother is or father. There are a couple names associated with addresses they've lived at like Abdullah Mohammed, Omar, but I don't know if this is just like neurodivergent brain on full display. I don't know, maybe I've just fallen in, into the spiral conspiracy theory rabbit hole, but I just cannot help but notice and I cannot shake it. Omar is an anagram for Mora or Mora is an anagram for Omar. An anagram is where you take all the letters and mix them around and makes another thing. Omar, O-M-A-R, Mora, M-O-R-A, it's the same letters. Lima, Linda, kind of similar, especially considering I also found one time the URL of Lima Yavremovich's LinkedIn was April Mora. Never found any more leads on that. It's just all very confusing to me. Now. Just to be very clear, is it possible that a woman named Linda Omar is truly the twins and Lima's mother? Sure, absolutely, totally possible. Lima has never explained the name Mora. She did make a shit post video addressing, making fun of me, I guess. She has several aliases. Lima Jer Jer Jerovomic. 
J- uh, Lima, Mora, Tagali, 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 Jevremovic, 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 Lima, Jevremovic. Okay. If you have a bunch of different ways of mispronouncing my name, does not make it a bunch of different aliases. And in that video, she said that she had gotten married and that's why her name changed. And also, I got married, so my last name changed. Big shocker. Well, that explains her name changing from Takali to Yevremovich. She never explained the Mora name, never. She didn't say I was married to a guy, Mora, no, never. So I don't know, I, that Mora Omar piece just really does stick out to me. And I don't really know what to make of it, but I did want to update y'all with that information. Cause like, if you think about it, Takali makes sense. Even different spellings of Takali, like it's kind of an uncommon last name. Like maybe they just misspelled it accidentally. I don't think that's what it is, but maybe I'm open to that. It's a possibility. I don't know. It's just my opinion. The Yevremovich name also makes sense if she indeed did marry Ivan Yevremovich, which I've never been able to find any court records for, but let's just pretend like maybe that did happen. Yevremovich makes sense. Takali hyphen Yevremovich even kind of makes sense. All the different spellings really don't honestly make sense to me, but let's just explain that away by people don't know how to damn spell. Fine. Doesn't explain Mora. Doesn't explain Mora. And so if their mother's name truly is Linda Omar, maybe Mora was like an homage to the mother. I, I really, honestly, I truly, I really don't know. But since I made the That Surprise Witness video about it, a lot of people have been sending me all kinds of information having to do with the yearbook, having to do with graduation. People are like, oh, I graduated from there. My husband graduated from there. I'm gonna ask him, I'm gonna ask him. It's inconclusive how old Lima is. Frankly, it's inconclusive how old the twins are because, and this will have to probably just be another investigation, but I also found some discrepancies on how old the twins are and when they actually did graduate. We'll get into that in a later investigation, but it's just, as usual, more questions than answers. The more I look into this case, the less makes sense. The more uh I look into this case, the less uh makes sense. So taking all the evidence together, it compels me to ask a few questions. Few, few questions remaining, few open questions on the roster. Did Lima graduate from Union High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2008? Did she graduate from Broken Arrow High School in 2008? or 2002, was she 30 years old in June, 2022? Or was she 32 years old in June, 2022? Was she actually born in July, 1989? Why is Dahlia now living or visiting with a woman named Linda Omar? And if their mom is this involved in their lives, it's very interesting to me why Lima is acting as this mother figure to them and going out and about in the world and acting like the whole thing is to help them get mental health treatment. Why, why also, just a side question, and I've asked all over and over, I'm gonna ask it again. Why would Lima and Ivan pay for Bam Margera, a rich and wealthy celebrity's mental health treatment whenever they apparently allegedly won't even or can't even pay for Dahlia and Diaz? No idea. Also, where's Dia? Where's Dima? She had filed that writ of habeas corpus, never showed up for the court date. She's missing as far as I'm concerned. Who is Linda Omar? Is that their mother? Is that her real name? Is it possible she might be somebody else using an alias? No idea. And finally, where's the other twin sister, Dia Dima? That's what I've written down here. I really don't know the answers to these questions. All I can do is speculate. I would really love if anybody had any information that could help us figure it out and piece it together. Like I said, there's a little bit more information on Dahlia. I think we should do a separate video because this one's already a little bit convoluted as it is. It's just kind of starting to look like it's all just made up bullshit in my personal opinion and speculation, which is not defamation. Speculation ain't defamation. Anyway, it's all just a bunch of confusing data. It's a confusing rabbit hole. It is an absolute wild goose chase. It's starting to look to me like this isn't accidents. This isn't good faith oopsie daisies. It's starting to look to me, in my opinion, and speculation conspiracy theory, that it's intentional, that all of this stuff is being done for the purpose of confusing people, covering up and concealing what the actual truth is and who these people really are. I will absolutely not stop investigating this until I have some type of satisfactory answer. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, Minnie bye.